What's going on, Jerome's? Happy Monday. So we saw allegedly the uh, the, the Packers allegedly beat the Vikings on Sunday. Mm. But look, look around the league. There's a lot of very intriguing storylines. So we got 10 things that we learned and around the NFL week 17. Let's get it going. Hey, the Lions are back. So the Lions put the bang thing on the Bears. Uh, now they're setting up a uh, scenario where they can get into the playoffs by beating the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers Week 18. And the Lions, I mean, respect. The Lions have had uh, very high draft picks for a number of years. They've hit on a bunch of them. they got talent all, all over the place. Aiden Hutchinson, Penny Sewell, uh, Amonor St. Brown, J the Jamison Williams fella, is if that fellow is going to be pretty good. Hmm. So, uh, and also you could say that they have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. Uh, Frank Ragnow, the pride of Chan Hassan, getting it done. So, yeah, the Lions are going to be trouble in the future. Maybe they'll get into the tournament. Maybe not. Uh, but also the Bears. I mean, what the hell, Bears? Like, this is what Chicago does every single game. Justin Fields will have 30 fantasy points. He'll run for like 100 yards. He'll throw for like six yards and a touchdown. Right. Uh, and he'll have a bunch of highlights, but then the Bears will still <laughs> lose by 20. <laughs> Or 31 in this case. Number two, a mini Russ redemption. So Russell Wilson went to Kansas City. Uh, they fired Nathaniel Hackett. They fired a bunch of uh, assistants as well. And Russ played well uh, and didn't get it done ultimately against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. But what can you do? Uh, but it was a weird week for Russell Wilson where it's very easy to hate on Russ. All right. So maybe he's a little phony. And also all the Seahawks, former teammates coming out of the woodwork, taking shots at him. Yes. Uh, but I, I do like what Jerry Judy and some of the Broncos teammates did this week standing up for him. Russ clearly got emotional by it. Maybe some of them will come to his birthday party next year. I don't know if he's still in Denver. It's possible. Where? I mean, is Russ past redemption? Is he just past his sell-by date? Did, was this the train heist uh, trade with the Seahawks and also him getting the quarter-billion-dollar contract? Probably not, but I don't know. It, it was nice to see because ultimately I do like Russ and him, him and the Broncos putting up a fight uh, in Kansas City. Ooh, our guy Jarek McKinnon, by the way, getting it done as a receiver. Love to see it. Next up, number three, Belichick keeps doing it. And doing it and doing it well. By the way, hey, do you remember when Dolphins uh, were eight and three? They've lost five games in a row. Yes, they've had quarterback issues all over the place, whatever. But uh, Bill Belichick and the Patriots, they get it done again. Also, they've had, they've had like six or seven defensive touchdowns, and that certainly makes up for having a very anemic offense. But I don't know how Belichick does it. Where no Tom Brady, but they play good defense and they're sound on special teams and they find uh, superstars like Marcus Jones and they just get it. Where I don't think they're they're going to ver go very far. I don't think if they get in as a seven seed that uh, you know people are necessarily shaking in their boots like oh here come the Patriots. But I mean it is still Belichick, right? But no Tom Brady. Next up, no. Oh, by the way, the Dolphins. Ugh. They may have hit the nos a little bit too early. Is what it is. Number four. Giants clinched the sixth seed. So we've seen a bunch of memes where uh, Brian Dayball is the best fat guy in New York since Biggie Smalls. <laughs> RIP Notorious B.I.G. But, I mean, the Giants, I mean, this is a good redemption story. Like, they haven't made the playoffs in six years. Brian Dayball coming in, clean up Joe Judge's mess, uh, actually getting something out of Daniel Jones. And, I mean, it's good for the Giants fans, even though it is set up at, on a collision course for the three-seed Vikings to host the six-seed Giants, and we're going to crush them like little grapes. But, I mean, good for them. I mean, a love story. Uh, love the story. Love me some Brian Dayball. I love that he just wears his emotions on his sleeve on the sidelines. So, yeah. And also, bring it on, Daniel Jones. Bring it on, Diego. We're, we ain't going to let you march 75 and also get a two-point conversion this time around. Number five, the Eagles are endangered. So, the Eagles without Jalen Hurts might be in trouble. And... They're fighting for the one seed. They could easily lose it. They could also lose the NFC East, by the way, uh, if they lose and the Cowboys win uh, against uh, the Commies. So, I mean, it's an interesting, very interesting situation. But uh, also, I think that the defense wasn't ready for Taysom Hill, who is really. Uh, but could it be a spot where the Eagles peaked a little bit too early? Possibly. They got some injuries. Uh, by the way, prayers up for Josh Sweat. Uh, but they got some injuries piling up uh, as well on top of Jalen Hurts. So, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know, Lord. It, it's plausible that Philly hangs on to the one seed and they don't lose it to the Niners. They don't lose it to the Cowboys, but it's looking tenuous right now. Number six, Tom freaking Brady. Like, like the league was going to allow the playoffs to run without Tom Brady and, and Aaron Rodgers. But the Bucks, well, actually, it was more Mike Evans, three tutties. That were just, uh, by the way, Mike Evans in the fantasy playoffs, Justin Jefferson in the fantasy playoffs, uh, or championship, as it were. Uh, but the Bucks. 
at 8-8. Eight and eight. They win the NFC South. Congratulations. I was rooting for Carolina, man, and Carolina was up early. Sam Darnold was getting it done, but, you know, is what it is. Uh, the Bucks win the division and go from there. Seven. Yikes. So the commies, I mean, it's what's more embarrassing is that after the loss, Ron Rivera didn't know that they could be eliminated uh, if the Packers allegedly, allegedly won. But uh, you're at home. You debuted your your stupid new mascot. You had the Browns, and the Browns have been reeling, and then you let Deshaun Watson look like a superstar. Uh, well, this wasn't it. Should they have gone back to Carson Wentz? No. I mean, ride it out with Heineke, even though Heineke had been really bad as of late. And I, I don't think that Ron Rivera's job is safe, even though I think that he's a hell of a football coach. I mean, they're just not getting it done. There's too much turmoil and upheaval. I, I mean, the Snyder's trying to sell, sell the team and just all this drama, so whatever. Number eight. Duvall's going to be dangerous, man. I, I love me some Jacksonville. And this is a game, it didn't matter if the, the Jaguars won, lost, or draw, or drew. It would be Titans versus Jaguars, week 18 for the uh, AFC South title. And Jacksonville just came in and put the bank thing on Houston in a basically meaningless game. But I'd love to see it, man. And Trevor Lawrence is going to be a superstar in this league. Well, hell, he, he's approaching it. And, I mean, they still have good draft picks. I mean, they still have cap space. They're going to be very dangerous for many years to come. Doug Peterson. I love that he's getting it done in Eastern Florida, man. Next up, number nine, RIP Jets. <sighs> Remember when the Jets were 5-2 and two and 6-3? and three? And then <laughs> Zach Wilson is a disaster. Also, did you see after the game? So Geno Smith said some nice things to Zach Wilson uh, because Geno's like, hey, I, I was a bust with the Jets as well. Uh, you, you can catch on in your in your 30s uh, and start for the Seahawks or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, the Jets, I mean, the Jets' defense is solid. Rob Salah has done a fantastic job there. Their offense has all the weapons in the world. They literally just do not have a quarterback. So, I mean, this could be an interesting spot in the offseason. Like, do they, do they go for a Derek Carr? Do they go for Tom Brady? Brady would never play for the Jets. Like, do they go all in, go all in for Aaron Rodgers? I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Or do they They try to move all the way up for a future franchise quarterback? Didn't work out last time with Zach Wilson. Who knows? Uh, lastly, number 10, Tomlin and Pickett get it done. So remember when the Steelers were, what were they, 2-5, and 2-6, and six? something like that. But they're 8-8, eight and eight, get a big win on the road against the Ravens. Kenny Pickett uh, leading the last second drive, touchdown Najee Harris. And Kenny Pickett's looking good. Like all the draft knocks against Kenny Pickett, small hand smells like cabbage. Uh, he, he gets it done. And uh, they love him, you know, former Pitt Panther. And they're, it's happened to man. And, and Tomlin extending his streak of non-losing seasons. Uh, they very much could make the playoffs. They very easily could go 9-8. and eight. And I, I mean – I feel like the Steelers are a little bit more dangerous than the Patriots in the playoffs in terms of who would want to play them, who wouldn't want to play them. But respect. I mean, Mike Tomlin freaking does it again. 2006 Vikings defense coordinator Mike Tomlin to you. Uh, but that's it. That's uh, 10 things that we learned around the NFL Week 17. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once we'll put the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.